this opportunity and this time, Lord, to represent you. Lord, I do not take it lightly. And I understand, dear God, that it is a privilege to stand on your behalf. Lord, use me this morning, dear God, to say those things that you would have your people to hear. And dear God, I pray, please, Lord, have mercy upon us, dear God. Fill me with your spirit, Lord, and have your way in this place. We love you, we thank you, and we praise you. And since Jesus, by the name we do pray, and all that love the Lord say, amen. 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 Again. Turn your Bibles to Ephesians. Amen. Turn your Bibles to Ephesians. I won't make you stand up no more. Amen. Once, you, once we do our scripture, you can have a seat. Amen. Ephesians chapter number 5. And we're going to start with verse number 33. And we're going to end with verse number 1. Amen. Ephesians 5, 33. 5, 33. And then we're going to end with chapter 6, verse number 1. One. Amen. It's on the board. Amen. On the screen. And so let's say it together. We're going to read it together in unison. Come on. Let's go. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself. And let the wife see that she respects her husband. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Amen. Grass with it. The flower thereof fading away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. We're going to continue our series on blessed family. Do what you've been commanded. Amen. You may be seated at this time. Amen. Amen. We've been taking a look at the family, and we understand that when we take a look at the family, God has a particular structure for the family. We talked about how God is a God of order. And we talked about how God's order is one way, but sometimes, just sometimes, the world decides to rearrange the order that God has ordained. But we shared that the further and further away we move from God's order, that is the more and more chaos and confusion that we are going to see. Right? And so when we take a look at family, God understand God designed it the way he designed it. And can I help you? God's way works. It works. Right? But we've got to be willing to have enough faith to do it what? His way. Right? When we take a look at God's way, to know his way is to know his word. Right? How many of you know that really truthfully that when we look at God's word, that God's word can be treated in different ways. And the way we feel about God's word can be determined by a look at your life. Right? See, faith is not just spoken. Right? You don't just speak faith. You hear it. And so when you look at the word of God, you've got to understand that it's not something you just speak so that, you know, things can happen. No, you've got to have enough courage to actually do what it says. Right? Okay, Pastor, put it in the English term. Well, it's kind of like this. When you take a look at God's word and you take a look at this book, do you realize that in many cases as Christians, if we look at our lives, and we look at the things that we go through, and we look at the things we experience, and we look at the, thing, the way we respond to life, do you realize that in many cases, we actually fail in our open book test? So, open book test. How can you fail an open book test this time? Number one, you don't know what to find what you need in the book. All I need is your faith. 
Obey what I'm telling you and watch the results. That's simple. Right? But sometimes we struggle with that why self. What we want. That don't be myself and I of mentality. Right? And let's be honest, we get mad when we don't get what we want, how we want, when we want it, and that's what gets us in trouble. Our wants. Remember a long time ago, my would tell you, we ain't got no wants. Remember they ain't got no wants, right? Right? But we gotta understand that sometimes those desires that we have go against the book. Right? And we gotta follow the book and trust God with what? With with the results. Okay? Preach it. You gotta help me. Okay? Here's what I'm gonna help you. Very simple sermon on today. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm not gonna try to impress you with how much I know and all this good stuff because God has shown me this one thing. <laughs> sometimes and sometimes, you know, we can try to, you know, know all kind of information and can't do one scripture right. You call it. Tell folk that they ain't doing it. But you ain't living it. Right. So, very simple, sir. Very simple, sir. You notice the word do is in bold. When you look at school, you in school, right? A long time ago, remember back in 1982? <laughs> There was something called a verb, right? A verb. And those verbs denoted that something was actually happening or some action was what taking place. I'm real big on words and meanings. That's just me. That's how I'm wired. And one thing about a verb, when you find them in sentences, they actually bring the sentence and make it alive. Why? Because it now just tells you What's happening what, in what you read? All right? So watch, check me out. Look at the passage, right? So when I look at God's word, guess what I should be looking for? The verbs. Why, Pastor? Because I want to know what he want me to do. And then I want to know what he going to do according to his promises. Wow. And if you pay attention to the verbs, you'll be able to walk in his will. So watch, check it out, check it out. Three things, all right? Let's see if you were paying attention. There were three groups of individuals in the text. Who can give it the first one? Stop preaching right now. 
He gave each group a specific command. And if we follow his way, it will work. But we don't do that. Right? Husbands love his wife. Let's go back and see what he said. His what?
There's many times we receive packages in the mail. And that package is going to have something on it. It's going to give you some kind of description or disclaimer or some kind of warning or something like that. I want you to think of this when you look at your wife. This one simple phrase. Caution. Handle care. I want you to think about that. Caution. Handle with care. Why, preacher? She's fragile. Right? She's fragile. You cannot just handle her in any kind of way because of the way God loved her. God made her. And even the ones that try to act hard, that's why they act the way they do. Because they don't know how to act no other way. Mean, mad, and crazy is what they sell. Because they don't know how to handle nothing. Mm -hmm. Jesus, fragile. Caution. Handle. Care. The next one was what? The wives, right? What did, what did he command the wives to do? I thought Aretha said, I love him, and guess what? 
The law commanded me to do it, but at the same time, I'm going to do it because guess what? I want to. Now, if you want to do whatever you want to do with yours, you can do that. But uh, hmm, we'll talk later about your issue.
trying to see where he's trying to take his family in the future, trying to figure out financially what's going to, what's going to happen, trying to see what the children might have something going on, trying to figure out how they're going to handle this and how they're going to handle that, and then when he gets home, he don't want to deal with disrespect. He wants to what? He needs that respect because guess what? All day long he's been told he ain't been doing it right all day long. So when you see him, danger, context of depression. And I tell, I tell couples, if you're not willing to adhere to this or do this, don't be mad. Don't be mad. You're not ready. Because guess why? You're not going to last. Because guess why? You won't be able to supply each other with what you need to even coexist with one another. And God showed me this one thing, <laughs> really truthfully, that what happens is with couples, you'll see them doing well, and I mean, oh yeah, it is there, yeah, there. Yeah. But guess what? Deep down inside, if they're not getting what they need, you'll either read about something, hear about something, and you try to figure out. What's going on with them? I thought they was. Wow. But what God's way, God's way, it works. And I just want to throw this in. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Women, I know, you know, with this whole respect thing, you know, the world trying to tell you to be a woman king and all this other stuff. But uh, I'm going to be the lion in my day. Amen. Praise <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Somebody just called. Amen. Somebody just called. Amen. You know why? Because I believe the Bible. Guess what? Whether folk condemn you or not, or whether folk talk about you or not, say you shouldn't be do that, I believe the Bible. That's how I believe. Right? So we've got to understand that God's way works. Right? So, command to what? Husbands to love, wife to respect. The last group is the children. What do you tell them? Say again. Okay. Okay. What does that mean? Do what mom and daddy is telling you to do. Listen to what they're telling you to do. How many times have, have I, as a son, with my parents, they told me some stuff to do, I didn't do it, and I had to go back and tell them I was sorry because I didn't listen to what they told me. How many of us, we got children, you told them what they needed to do, you saw them doing what they were doing, they didn't listen, they had to come right back and tell you what, I'm sorry, you were right. What are you trying to say, Pastor? Children, there's some things mama and dad have experienced that you haven't experienced before. There's some things in your life that you're going to go through that guess what? You can benefit from their mistakes. One of my brothers told me now, I'm not going to say his name, but he told me this no, you know it's no, not that. <laughs> he said, Kyle, I made many mistakes in my life, so you would have to. I couldn't say that. He said, so listen to me. See, 
you got to understand, so that obedience there, it doesn't diminish your mind. It doesn't say you can't think. It just says, I trust the person that's telling me because the person that's telling me has an insight on stuff that I can benefit from.
to hurt your own self. We see what you're doing. We know what you're doing. We're trying to stop you from doing what you're doing, and you still do it. Oh, Jesus, that hurts me. God is working. 